Paul busted it up last time. So, hello, America. And hello, Kentucky. Welcome to Western Kentucky University. And here we are. What are we going to learn about? Relevant costs. Relevant costs. So what is, what is, Maxton, what is a relevant cost? Maxton? Maxton? A cost that's avoidable. Beautiful. Mr. Baker, what's a sunk cost? A cost already incurred. Ryan, are sunk costs relevant? You don't got that in your notes, do you? It's one or the other. It's one. It's either yes or no. They're not avoidable. Some costs are not avoidable. Which is a true statement. Therefore, are they relevant or no? Um, no. No. He might write that down. Are some costs relevant? No. For the exact reason that uh, Ryan said, and that is because they are not avoidable. What's an opportunity cost? Blaine, you got those notes? A potential benefit foregone. What's that mean? Uh, I mean, you got it word for word. That is exactly the notes I gave you. What's foregone mean? Uh, no, it's actually what you've given up. Okay. So you haven't already done it. It's what you've given up. What you give up to come to class? What? What'd you give up to come to class today, right now? Uh, time outside. Time outside. So that is the, that is what you forwent. You gave up time outside to be inside in class. Okay. So that is, and that is your opportunity cost, right? You could be outside playing golf or whatever it is you, whatever your poison happens to be, right? And. Uh, that is what you've given up. Now, do you like playing golf? Am I remembering? Do you like playing golf? I don't play golf. You don't play golf? Never have, never want to? Uh, what would you rather be doing outside? Fishing. Fishing. Not bad. Not bad. There's other. I got it. I got it. Uh, And what is an oppor oh, what is an opportunity cost? Which means what? Something that you could benefit from. from. Why are you laughing, Carson? Because I literally was just ha talking about this over here. Were you thinking about motorcycle? Because I forget, because I saw you showing these guys photos, some 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 sort of a motorcycle. <sighs> so Carson, what's a uh, what's that mean? A potential benefit for gone? It's something. It's what you gave up to to be here. What did you give up to be here, Ian? Right here, right here, right now. Time, doing what? You'd probably be golfing. So time spent golfing is what you gave up to be here. Okay. So those are the definitions, okay? Oh, the, I need to ask, I do need to ask one more question. <sighs> Peyton, are opportunity costs relevant? Yes or no? Yes, they are. It's quite relevant, like, hey, I could have been outside. Is that relevant? Yeah. Hey, I could have been working. And making money, is that relevant? Yes. Why are you here? You're here learning so you can make more money, okay? But that is all very, very relevant. <clears throat> so we're going to jump around a little bit. I'd like to go to Funk and Wagnall next. So that'll be kind of going forward. Funk and Wagnall kind of, uh, if you, when you find the page, let me know. There we are. Page 165, everybody. Page 165. Let me get a drink of whiskey. 
And it's not really whiskey. In fact, it probably doesn't even look like whiskey. Does it look like whiskey? What would whiskey look like? Would it have more color? This, this looks more like vodka? Okay. What would that much vodka do to me? <laughs> we'll find out. Or not, because it's really water, just for the record. Just for the record, it's really water. But uh, Funk and Wagnall. So if we got Funk and Wagnall, attorneys of law, that have been asked to represent a local client in proceedings to be held in San Francisco, California. Classify each of the following items on the basis of their relationship to this engagement. Items may have multiple classification. So before we get started, let's define what an outlay is. Okay, and so that's defined at the very bottom of the page, if you look like, if you look, is it, is that what that box is around? Yeah, there's a little box around that. You see how, everybody see that little box? What's an outlay? An outlay is a cost that requires a cash disbursement or a laying out of cash. So you got to put cash on the table. Cash is leaving your pocket. Cash, okay? So, and remember, these are all context specific, right? And so these questions are about specific. Well, let me read the, again, Funk and Wagnall has been asked to represent a local client in proceedings to be held in San Francisco, okay? So it's not about going to Dallas, Texas. It's go about going to San Francisco, okay? So the case will require three attorneys to stay four nights in a San Francisco hotel. Predicted hotel bill is $1,200. Grace, have they gone yet? No, so they're thinking about it, right? They're thinking about it. Is the predicted hotel bill relevant then, Grace? Yes. Yes, why? It could change, and so what happens, what's significant about if it changes though? If they change the, if they decide not to go, do they spend $1,200? No, that's it. So this is, this is a cost that can be avoided. Right, Olivia? Are you still, you got your phone behind your uh, orange glass there? Are you checking out mom's Facebook photos still? Because yes. <laughs> you're laughing much more. Much, much more than, than I would expect you to in an accounting class. Yeah, see, there it is. See, now I can see the phone. You've got to shift it around when I move. <laughs> so, is it relevant then? Connor? Yes. What, what, where should you check? What, where should you, is it relevant opportunity or relevant outlay? I defined it at the bottom of the page. We did that first. You remember that part? What were you distracted by? Am I not talking loud enough? Me too. It is not an opportunity cost. It's an outlay because they have to pay for the hotel. Right? So it is a re relevant outlay because if they go to San Francisco, they have to stay somewhere, so and they've got to pay for that. Why isn't it? I, I see why it is an outlay cost, but why is it not an opportunity cost? They're not giving, it's not conflicting with, like, it's an opportunity cost if they're going to stay in this hotel instead of that one. Or if they're, yeah, if they're going to, yeah, if they're going to stay in this hotel. So it's a, there's, there's not a clear, I could be outside, but I'm inside instead. You know, there's not that clear contrast. Therefore, it's not, a, it's not an opportunity cost. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, Funk and Wagner's professional staff is paid $800 per day for out-of-town out assignments. So that basically means if we go out of town, we got to pay $800 per day. Ellen, relevant or irrelevant? Relevant. Why? Yeah, if they don't go, they don't have to pay. So is it a relevant offer, relevant opportunity cost or a relevant outlay? Um, relevant outlay. It's a relevant outlay because we got to pay them, don't they? Yes, but 
They don't want to be paid with time outside. They want to be paid in cash. Yes, ma'am. Could be, ultimately. Like, ultimately, even if you're using one of these, right, it's really a cash disbursement, right? Okay. Yeah. If you're writing them a check, which is probably what they're doing, paying them with a check, that's a cash disbursement. Okay. So it's just a broad term to describe we are paying somehow, some way, somewhere. Okay. So <clears throat> number two, relevant. Outlay. <clears throat> Piece of cake walking in the park, easiest fun off a log. Number three, last year depreciation on Funk and Wagner's office was $12,000. Do you know what depreciation is, Skylar? Depreciation is where, uh, I mean, we didn't dig into the weeds, but depreciation expense is something that can appear on an income statement which if you remember is revenue minus expenses. It can appear as an expense. And what it is is we spent $10,000 on a car and we expect to use it for four years. Let's spread that cost out as depreciation expense. Okay? And so, so it, is, it is an expense, ba uh, it's, it's money that we, it's an expense that we're kind of adding to the expenses on an income statement for a purchase that was already made. Okay. And that is number three. So what do you think that is then? <coughs> Irrelevant. Sunk or outlay? I like it. Irrelevant sunk. <clears throat> Irrelevant sunk. Hello. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Uh, that was that was Skyla. Next is Gatlin, number four. Round trip, round trip transportation to San Francisco is expected to cost $600 per person for the engagement. Gatlin. It is a relevant outlay. Because if they don't go to San Francisco, what happens? They don't have to pay. And if they do go, well, then the airline's going to want some money. Okay? Number four, relevant outlay. Jackson, number five, the firm has recently accepted an engagement that will require partners to spend two weeks in Dallas. The predicted out-of-pocket costs of this engagement are $8,500. I would say that's a <coughs> irrelevant outlay. Irrelevant outlay. Why is it irrelevant? Because it says that they accepted the engagement two weeks ago. Then they expect to go back to Dallas. <coughs> I'm going to, it is, it's the right answer for the wrong reason. It's the right answer for the wrong reason. Because what are we worried about? Are we worried about Dallas? In fact, I specifically used that example a little bit earlier. Blake, are we worried about, are we, where are we talking about going? San Francisco. San Francisco. How close is Dallas to San Francisco? Heck of a drive. I mean, it's probably me, a couple thousand miles driving. So it's an irrelevant outlay because it has nothing to do with our proposed trip. It's irrelevant outlay because it has nothing to do with our proposed trip. We're going to San Francisco. We don't care about Dallas. <coughs> right, Maxton? Blake, number six, the firm has a maintenance contract on its word processing equipment that will cost $2,200 next year. Um, 
a relevant opportunity? Are we being forced to choose between paying for this and going to San Francisco? Correct answer. So this is different than the example of going, you know, I'd rather be outside. I gave up being outside to be where? Here with all of us inside. And so that, that's the feel of an opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost is always going to feel like that. It's what you gave up. Yeah, I gave up coffee, so now I'm drinking water. Opportunity cost. Okay? So try again. Oops, excuse me. So would it be an irrelevant outlay? Relevant or irrelevant? Irrelevant outlay. Irrelevant outlay. True story. It's an irrelevant outlay. What's it have to do with going to San Francisco? Not a thing, does it? It does not have one single thing to do with going to San Francisco. Totally independent. Sure, we got to pay it, and yes, it's going to be an outlay, but it has no effect on our decision about whether or not to go to San Francisco. Therefore, it is an irrelevant <coughs> outlay. Danny, you ready? You, you ready? Okay, if the firm accepts the engagement in San Francisco, it'll have to decline a conflicting engagement in Orlando that would have profited, provided a net cash inflow of $7,200. This is a relevant opportunity cost. This is what they got to give up, right? This is what they got to give up. If they don't go to, you know, if they're, yeah, this is what they got to give up. They can't go to Orlando and to San Francisco at the same time. And now maybe when this was written, that was a hard choice. But I don't know, right now there's one of those that I would much prefer to go to rather than the other, personally. But a relevant opportunity cost. So how much, Corey, should they make if they go to San Francisco? At least. $7,200. $7,200, okay? Does everybody see that? Ian! You see that? What did I just say? You have no clue. There's a party going on over here. We're trying to figure out number eight. What? We're trying to figure out number eight. But what about number seven? We had that one already. You had that one. So you tell me, how much should they make if they go to San Francisco? How much they should make? Yes. That, I mean, that's the question I asked Corey. Don't know, but then. What do you, you should know? They could. Corey knew. Seven. Corey knew. Orlando. You weren't paying attention to Corey? Yeah, I was not, no. Well, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know? How much should they make? If they go to San Francisco, they need to make how much? It should be more than 7,200. It should be more than 7,200. Because right? uh, that's what they're giving up. They're giving up 7,200 to go to San Francisco. So if they're going to San Francisco, they should make more of that. 7,200. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, uh, well, maybe. So the answer, so guys, tell us, so what does number eight say? The firm's variable overhead is $40 per client hour. Do you know what variable overhead is? That might make this hard. I'm not 100% sure you would know what variable overhead is. What is variable overhead, gentlemen? Since you were working so hard on this one, I want to give you a chance to tell us all the right answer. You know what I mean? I mean, that would be unfair unfair of me not to give you this opportunity. Gentlemen? We were looking on it. We you were looking on it? But we didn't get the answer. You, you, <coughs> sorry, I don't know why. <coughs> Just a weird tickle in my throat. <coughs> um, what is variable overhead? Variable overhead is stuff like Paper and supplies, like for a law firm, it'd be like paper and supplies and notepads and, and that sort of stuff, right? Toner for, for, for uh, printers and printer paper. It is basically assigned to a client based on the number of hours worked. So it's just this chart, basically for every hour worked, there's this expected cost of, what is the rate? $40. $40 per hour. That's what it is. 
So if we work hours, for every hour worked, $40. If zero hours are worked, how much money? Zero. It's variable. So does that sound relevant or irrelevant then, gentlemen? Relevant. relevant because if, it's ze if we work zero hours, zero cost. If we work for every hour worked, this cost is incurred. So it is a relevant cost, and it is an outlay. Okay, it's a relevant because it's not incurred yet, right? If we work, then we have the expense. If we don't work, then it's no expense. What, Carson? Nothing. You said I know you said something because I saw the lips moving. You don't want to share with us. Well, you weren't keeping it to yourself, though. You were sharing it on your, with your table with yeah. Sailor and Ian. Man. Yeah. Lane. The firm pays $150 per year for Mr. Funk's subscription to a law journal. Is it um, irrelevant cost outlay? Why do you think it's irrelevant? Does it, does, it, does it seem like it's going to change depending upon whether or not we go to San Francisco? No. So it's yeah. relevant cost? No. You, no. The, actually, I gave you the reason for why it's irrelevant. Uh oh. Because it doesn't change our, like, we're thinking about whether or not to go to San Francisco. And if this has no effect on that, <clears throat> you know, then irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. This one can be either outlay or sunk because they don't tell us when it will be paid or when it was last paid, right? So you can actually check both, outlay or sunk, because we that depends on when it will be paid or when it last was played, paid. Maxton, how are you? You're kind of, your eyes were kind of... You, you were just staring off if there's some magic spot on the wall there that you were looking at. Finally, Hermes, number 10, last year the firm paid $7,500 to increase the insulation in its building. Sunk. Outlay? Sunk. Irrelevant sunk. Okay. Irrelevant sunk. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts, piece of cake, walk in the park, easy, falling off a log. No questions? Ready to move on? Let's just turn the page, shall we, Frodo Company? Say, who's Frodo? Huh? Frodo the... It is the company name, but you've never heard of Frodo? The Hobbit. Have you read the book The Hobbit? Olivia, have you read the book, The Hobbit? No. Yeah. Maxton, you haven't either? I watched the movies, I haven't read the book. Which is better, the books or the movies? Books. books. I mean, the movies are good, right? How many people have seen the movies, uh, Lord of the Rings? <clears throat> That's quite a few of you. Awesome. They're, they're considered kind of old almost now, aren't they? Do you all consider them kind of old movies? You wouldn't call them new. Anybody see? There's actually a series called The Hobbit as well. A three. Have you seen? Anybody seen those? Also quite good. I mean, Lord of the Rings is better, I think. I mean, The Hobbit's a little over the top with regard to stuff, but you know, they're both entertaining and worth binging. Like, kind of do all three in a day. Yes, you do have to have your day cleared out. That you have to have your day cleared out, but both very fun. I, uh, my wife and I have done both series. Uh, so, if you go back to um, go back to where you took notes, thank you. If you go back to page, 
you go back to page 156, you see some Dr. Fessler's handy notes there on page 156? You see a list of examples of decisions made using relevant cost thought. You all see that? Okay. Kind of keep that in mind. Kind of look through that list and then come back to page 166. What's it say in all capital letters below the name Frodo Company? Say. Uh, machine replacement. Machine replacement. What do you think that might be? What are, what are they thinking about doing? Replacing a machine. Replacing a machine. Not rocket science, right? Why might a business choose to replace a machine? I suppose there's lots of reasons. Were you thinking of one? What, what, why might a company choose to replace a machine? It doesn't function. Maybe it's getting broken, right? Maybe it's getting broken. Maybe there's something better about the new one. Uh, actually, at John Deere, when we took a, uh, when my wife and I took a tour of a John Deere f uh, facility factory outside uh, Des Moines, Iowa, they were super excited because they had, they were getting four machines that did the work of what it used to take eight machines to do. So they were just faster, more flexible, all that sort of stuff. There's lots of different reasons why a company might choose to buy a new machine. So, when, so now we're going to start seeing some numbers, okay? Now we're going to start seeing some numbers. And it's really important that you ask the right question, right? So they, let's read through this. Let's read through this. Frodo Company is trying to determine whether or not to replace an old machine with a brand new machine with lower annual operating costs. So they're telling us why they're thinking about buying the new machine, aren't they? It's cheaper to operate. Should Frodo Company keep the old machine or purchase the new? And the thing is, they already own the old machine, don't they? They own it. So what do they really think? They're, so they're not thinking about choosing between these two machines, are they? They're thinking about, should we buy new machine. Should we buy the new machine? Yes or no? That's what they're thinking about. And so that is, this determines what is relevant, right? So we want to be thinking about what will change if we buy the new machine. What will happen? What's going to happen if we buy the new machine? Right? You know, Christian is Christian. You are Christian. I'm looking at, I can see Christian, right? So Christian, because he chose to come into class, he gave up sunshine. And vitamin D, one of the things he gave up, what, he, what does he get by coming to class? Well, I get to he gets to interact with Dr. Fessler, he gets to take some notes, he gets to learn some stuff, okay? And so those are the types of things we want to be thinking about, which is what happens if we buy the new machine, okay? What happens if we buy the new machine? Olivia, what's one thing that's going to happen? But using the numbers that we've got here. So yes, they are going to use it. But remember, um, maybe I asked the question wrong. Let me, let me ask a little bit different question. Because uh, right now we got the old machine. What are all the things that'll happen if we choose to buy the new machine? Although I'm not sure I asked that much differently. 
Like we don't own it yet, right? The annual operating cost is over a million. Yes, they will. By how much? <coughs> How much? Yes. For how many years, Olivia? Five. Then the last question for you, Olivia, because this is actually really, really important. Is this kind of a benefit or a cost? Is this money coming in or money going out? It's actually money coming in because it is money we are saving. So you focused on the right number, which is the money, this is what's going to change. If we buy the new machine, they're going to save $11,000 a year. If you save, if you find a way to pay 25 cents for these cans of energy drink, how much money will you save? If you spend, find a way to spend just 25 cents on these cans of energy drink, how much money will you save? Something. But that is money you save, right? So, th so is your bank account going to go up or down as you buy more of those for 25 cents? Well, yeah, you are spending money. But relative to you spending money for a more expensive one, it's going to save you money. And so that's a benefit. Am I confusing you? That part did. But we're say if you save money, if you save money, are you better off or worse off? Better off. And so we're going to call this a positive number then. So, so what we're going to find is we need to very carefully keep track of what's a positive number, an inflow, and what's a negative number or an outflow. What else is going to happen? Nate? Yep. yep. Is that an answer? Is that your final answer? No. Yep. Um, yep. Say what, sir? You won't or you will? I will not. Why not? Because it's not available. Oh, but, but see. If you buy a new fishing pole, do you need the old one necessarily? Of course, you might keep it anyway. You might keep it anyway, but you don't need it, do you? So if you choose to sell it. So you're getting $2,000 from the old one? Yes. But you can't, you wouldn't sell the old one until you bought a new one, right? Yeah. Right? You wouldn't. There's no way you're getting rid of your fishing pole until you, you have a replacement. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as you buy the replacement, then you can sell your old one for, as you said, $2,000. Is that money coming in or money going out? Yes. Sell old machine, $2,000. Sailor, what else is going to happen? They, they're missing the easy one. Yes, they are both going to last five years. What's your point? Um, they just have the same money. Yes, they do, which makes the problem easier. But that's not a number I can put on the board. There's one more number I can put on the board. Is there a difference in value? Or difference in value. What is the book value? Let's make sure. Let's, uh, let's talk about what book value is. What is book value? Well, it's the value it's recorded in the books at, right? It's a balance sheet amount. It's an asset. It's how much money, in this case, it's telling us 
how much money we spent originally on that old machine and how much we are spending or will spend on the new machine to purchase it. That's what those two numbers represent. The book value of the old represents how much we originally paid for that machine, however long ago it was. And the book value of the new represents how much money we are going to have to pay to buy the new one. So those are the two pieces of information we are being given there. Back at you, Sailor. Which of those numbers, are, which, what number appears on, given that information, what number appears on the board? Are you talking about spending 40,000? Yes. Yes. So you want me to write it all? Well, what was your question? I'm sorry. What goes on the board? What changes? Yes, there is. There's a $10,000 increase in price. But how did I describe that? What's that $30,000 represent? The, the value cost of the old machine. How much we paid for the old machine. Mm -hmm. What's the $40,000 represent? For the new machine. New book cost. The new how much it will cost us to purchase the new machine. $40,000. Yes. Is the $30,000 relevant? No, because we've already, we've already bought it once. Correct. It's not relevant, so it doesn't go on the board at all. No thirty thousand, nothing that, not no thirty thousand whatsoever. So what would go on the board? The forty thousand, as an inflow or an outflow? Yeah, we got to buy it, don't we? Got to spend money. Buy a new machine. So if we buy the new machine, what's going to happen? First things first, we got to buy the darn thing, right? Why would we buy the darn thing? We, gotta, we would think about buying it because it's cheaper to run. And then finally, if we do buy the darn thing, we can sell the old one. Not for very much money, but it's a little bit, right? Might as well kick it out the door get a couple couple grand and so what's this give us this gives us seventeen thousand dollars and it's really important to note is this a positive number or a negative number it's a positive number in a way you're saving that amount of money yes yes if you buy the new machine Therefore, you say, yes, we should buy. Should we buy the new machine? Yes. Because this answer is a positive number. And it would not matter how positive it was. If it's $1, $17,000, a million dollars, we would still have the same answer, which is yes, buy the new machine, okay? Yes, buy the new machine. How's that feel? Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts, okay. Let's do Hassle Company, please. Hassle Company, turn forward probably two pages, there we are. Page 168, everybody, page 168. Okay. What type of problem is this, Stella? written in all capital letters. Make or buy. Make or buy. So what do you think is going on? Um, yeah, like a part. Like, right, like these chairs, a company could choose to buy 
some of the parts from another company and then just assemble them or actually manufacture them ourselves and then include them in the selling process. So that is a real choice that real companies make, right? Do we make all the parts ourselves or do we buy the parts from other places and then assemble them together? You know, if you go down to a, uh, a computer store and buy a hand-built computer, are they making the parts? No, actually. They are not. They're buying the parts and then assembling them for you. Okay? So that's a choice. So currently, Hassel Company produces ceramic teapots with wooden handles, and its production facility in Patchogue, New York, has idle capacity. It means there's no opportunity cost. In 1998, the budget specifies that 20,000 wooden handles will be required so that the company can produce the same number of teapots. So cost to manufacture handles are as follows. Direct material, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, fixed manufacturing overhead. R&M Handle Company specializes in the production of wooden handles for ceramic teapots. They have offered to supply handles for $1.25 a piece. Should they make or buy those handles? Okay. But let's define some things first, right? It's been a little while since we've talked about some of these words. Carson, what's direct material? What is direct material? Everything All use the stuff you can see, right? All the stuff you can see, that's direct materials. What is, is it variable or fixed? Carson. If we make zero chairs, how much money do we spend on all the physical stuff? If we make one, two, does that change? So does that sound variable or fixed to you? Variable. So direct materials, is it variable or fixed, Carson? Variable, okay. August, what's direct labor? But what is it? Define. Like what it costs to serve the It's the cost of who or what? The workers. the workers, the people. The cost to put these together. And then you answered the next question. Is it variable or fixed? Variable. It is variable. Why are you shaking your head, man? He's right. He's right. You're looking at something else? Direct labor, variable. Variable overhead. We've talked about that today, haven't we? What would be an example of a variable overhead, Veronica? Like the supplies for the company. Like the supplies for the company. But we can, let's think about this chair. What's variable manufacturing overhead? Huh? Other none? Other none? Other none? Oh, it's here. What would be an example? Maxton. Variable overhead. <laughs> variable overhead. Anybody? Variable overhead. Joseph, you got some variable overhead for us? Variable overhead. Anybody? Blade? No? Your friend, you putting your heads together, coming up with nothing? Sir? What's, give me an example, supplies. What, what supplies do we need to make a chair? Screws. Okay, that could be an example. That's an indirect material, could be an example of this. There's another good example we can come up with. Now the plastic's probably direct material, right? There's a lot of it. Indirect material would be like little things like layer of varnish or the inks used to color the plastic or something. There's another one, and that would be the electricity to run the machines that make this, right? If we make zero chairs, do we need to turn on our machines? Okay, and so the more chairs we make, the more electricity we would use. So the electricity to run the machines would be an example of variable overhead. What would be an example of fixed overhead? Ryan. 
Yes. Because um, if it works for the chair, it works for the uh, handles. I guess that's not that's not an encouraging way to begin an answer. What do you think, sir? What? Fixed overhead. Uh, like what is it? Give me an example for uh, this chair. Uh, uh, Ian, you got some for us? The, the word we'd use is supervisor. The salary of the supervisor is making sure these are made right. That would be correct. Why are you looking at me funny like that? Another example would be depreciation expense on a machine, like the cost of the, you know, or the rent on a machine that is used to make this. That would also be another example of a fixed cost. So do fixed costs change? So if we're paying rent on a machine and we make one unit and then up it to two, does, it, does our rent change? Sir, I? Don't know. So let's imagine. Let's make up a number, right? Let's imagine. Let's say that we're spending a thousand dollars on a machine. We're renting a machine that we're using to make chairs. Have you ever rented before anything before? Hmm. Not even like an apartment. Hmm. You know what it means to rent something? Okay. So if we're renting a machine, that means we get to use the machine, right? So if we make one chair, how much rent are we going to pay? And I named a number, I think. Do you remember the number I named? $1,000. Okay. So if we're renting the machine for $1,000 and we make one chair, how much rent do we have to pay? $1,000. If we make two chairs with that, how, many, how much rent do we have to pay? No. $1,000. If we make five chairs, how much do we have to pay? How about 10 chairs? <coughs> yes. So, if we stop making chairs, how much do we still have to pay, Sarah? $1,000. Everybody see that? So now I've given you examples of all these costs, right? Are there any of them that are not relevant, Peyton? Man, doesn't that suck when you're on your phone and the professor calls on you? Golly, that sucks. Which would, would or would not? The rent would not be relevant. And the rent was which category? Direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, or fixed overhead? Fixed overhead. Is fixed overhead relevant? No, fixed costs are not relevant. They're not avoidable. They're not going to change depending upon our choice. So what costs are relevant then? The direct materials, the direct labor, and variable overhead. How much do those add up to? Grace. Direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead. How much? How much? A dollar thirty. I don't know. You got a calculator, don't you? I mean, I... what? But what I'm talking about are the fixed costs. Are the, are the fixed overhead costs relevant? Great. So why are you adding them up to one thirty? No, I want to know how much are the relevant costs. No, 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 no. Just looking at these. Is direct materials relevant? Yes. Is direct labor relevant? Yes. Is variable manufacturing overhead relevant? Yes. 
is fixed overhead relevant. So I want the sum of those relevant costs that we just walked through. What are, what's the sum of the relevant costs? You don't know. You don't got a calculator? Come on now. Does somebody want to help her? Dollar ten. One ten. So this is relevant benefit. That's how much we're going to save if we stop making handles, right? Those are the costs that are going to go away if we stop making handles. Okay? How much we got to pay to make that happen? Uh, Connor. In order, so we, if we stop making handles, we're going to save a dollar ten. Yeah. How much do we got to pay to stop making handles? Because what's our choice here? Our choice is to make or to. No, 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 no. A dollar twenty-five is what I'm asking for. Because here's what it costs us to buy them, right? Yeah. So we can pay a dollar twenty-five. That's what you meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to pay a dollar twenty-five to save a dollar ten. You want to do that? Who wants to do that? Ellen, you want to do that? Spend a dollar twenty-five to save a dollar ten. So you give me a dollar twenty-five, and I'll give you a dollar ten. Sounds awesome to me. But not so much to you. And you actually represent the company here. You know, so it's, is this a good deal for the for, uh, Hassel Company? It is not, is it? It is not a good deal for Hassel Company. So should they say yes or no then, Skyla? They should say no. They should say no, because that is greater than that, okay? That is greater than that. Questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. How does this feel? Let it sink in. We've actually got just two more classes. Next week, Tuesday, we'll learn some more. Next week, Thursday, we will review for the final exam. And finals week is the week after that. So don't forget everything yet. And we'll see you on Tuesday. OK, everybody? Take care. Be good.